Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to our welcome screen. <laughs> I'm just getting myself set up here. We are going to get going in a moment. All right, Mr. In Stitches, you can take us to the craft table and we will uh, say a big hello to everybody. All right, hi everyone. Welcome to a live, live stream, live tutorial, live in the craft room on a, what are we on, a Tuesday afternoon. I'm glad you all could kind of be here and hang out with us. We thought that we would talk about the mystery of gauge today. So I have some gauge swatches for a couple of projects I'm working on that I'm going to be working on today. But I thought since I had to do that, it might be a good idea to actually address the mystery of gauge. This um, seems to be a problem for a lot of people, especially for beginners. Um, and actually in Improving your ability to understand and recognize and use a gauge is like a masterclass level of being able to crochet from a pattern, uh, being able to adapt a pattern to your own needs, um, and ultimately how to design patterns. So I thought it would be really helpful if we unraveled the mystery of, of gauge today. So we're going to make some samplers. We're going to talk about gauge. We're going to explain you know, where you might find it, why you might use it. And I'm going to make some. So uh, we're going to jump right in. And before I do, I want to thank everybody who popped in today. I know it was a little bit last minute, but um, it's one of those one of those days where we realized we had some time and we thought if you know if everybody wants to hang out and have a little bit of company while you get a little bit of work done, and maybe we'll talk about Gage. If you have questions about that, we can hopefully answer them. Uh, it's kind of a nice thing for that. So we have some sunshine. Let's just get right into it. I have um, a couple of things for today's uh, visual <laughs> visual aids. I've got a great big ball of yarn, and I'm going to use this to demonstrate how to use and operate a gauge off of a yarn label. So I'll get to that in a minute. Some of the things you need with um, when you're doing a gauge that are absolutely necessary is a measuring tape. You absolutely must have a measuring tape. It's recommended that you get one that has the imperial on one side and the metric on the other. We're a global village now, so um, some patterns are going to be, they may give you the, the imperial measurements, so inches, and other patterns may give you the metric um, measurements, so centimeters, uh, mostly centimeters, sometimes in millimeters. I had a great question today on the, the channel about measuring your crochet hooks and knitting needles. And someone asked me, you know, your your measuring tape is in centimeters. I don't understand why you're you're saying millimeters. And I think it's worth just saying before we get going that because there are a lot of different measurement terms out there uh, for the different sorts of things we do, a millimeter is a very small measurement and hooks and needles are very small. So we tend to measure them in millimeters as opposed to centimeters or inches because millimeters are much more exacting when you're working on a scale like this. This is a very, very small thing. So if you're going to say measure the diameter of a knitting needle or a crochet hook like this, so you would sort of take your hook, lay your, um, your measuring tape across it. It's much easier to use the millimeters than it is to use the centimeters because most hooks and needles are going to be under the measurement of a centimeter to start with. So this is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook and you can see that if I hold it up nice and close to the uh I'll do my best here um this is a five and a half millimeter hook so if I lay my little measuring tape across the width of the hook you'll see that it if I can hold it still that it basically comes out to just a little over the half of the centimeter mark so that tells me that it's 5.5 millimeters and that's a really good way to measure your hooks if you've lost the measurements on them or if you got them from a secondhand store or if they're old and have old measurement system on it and you don't know what it is you can measure your hooks and your knitting needles but we use millimeters in this case because this is a small small scale um, when it comes to patterns um, especially for clothing and whatnot we tend to use inches or centimeters because that's a larger scale but not so large that 
you know, you don't really measure sweaters in terms of yards or meters. So the next up measurement, centimeters, inches, that's the scale at which we measure clothing and most crochet projects. Um, so you want a measuring tape that is an imperial and metric just so you can use either or patterns because um, some patterns will be in both, some in one or the other. Um, so very important to have one of those. And I highly recommend having a piece of paper and a pen or a marker or a pencil, something to make notes on. I was just having a chat with Katie earlier today and we were talking about how important notes are and making notes. Um, you can never make enough notes. This is why it's good to keep a project journal because you need a place to keep all of your notes in one place. And when you're working on a sampler or a gauge, especially if it's for an important project, you wanna be able to write down your notes. And I will be doing that today. So that's what I've got. I've got a hook, I've got some yarn. I have actually more yarn over here, which I will get to in a minute. I have more hooks, which I will be getting to. I have a piece of paper and a marker, and I've got my handy dandy measuring tape. So that's all I really need for today. I don't need scissors. I'm not going to be keeping any of these things. I'm going to basically work out the sampler and then pull the yarn back out. So um, this isn't a completed thing. This is just how I would build a sampler. Having said that, if you are making a sampler, let's say you're working on a clothing pattern and it highly recommends the gauge, I always recommend you test the gauge on a pattern if it's for clothing, because in terms of size, if a project is size specific, the gauge is super important. Um, you might want to make a gauge or make that swatch, test your gauge, and then keep that swatch. And every time you wash your um, garment or that project down the road, you wash the swatch with it. Why? Well, if you ever wind up developing a little hole in that project, like it's a sweater or it's a much loved blanket, you'll have a uh, fabric, or in this case, yarn, that has been washed the same number of times, has been sort of weathered the same number of times, and will fit in, It'll be, you can start taking it apart and you can use some of that yarn to fix the hole in your garment or your blanket. And you, it won't be very noticeable because that yarn basically has been weathered alongside your garment or your blanket. So little tip there. Um, all right, let's talk about gauge and why it's important. When you pick up a ball of yarn at the store, you're going to recognize that there's always these little symbols that run along the sort of the side of the label somewhere. There's usually your size. So in this case, it's a super bulky size six yarn. Then there are these two little boxes in the middle. One has oh, cross. Why? Oh, okay. Sorry. Mr. Little... Mr. and Stitches is down the well, everybody. If you can hear him or not, <laughs> he is here. He's just down the well again today. Um, all right. I'm going to try and hold this where everybody can see it nice and clearly. Um, this first box usually has two cross knitting needles in it. So that's the knitting gauge. And the second box will have a crochet hook in it. That's the crochet gauge. And then this is sort of your wash and care instructions. And we did a live stream on that a while ago, a couple of years ago now, but um, they keep adding symbols to the wash and care labels or the wash and care symbols on labels for yarn. So I think we're gonna actually sort of revisit yarn label wash and care icons at some point um, because they have added a lot more. And I think it's worthwhile knowing what all these mean, especially if you're looking for a specific kind of yarn or fiber for a project. Um, because once you get comfortable with your use of fibers and how, how they operate for you, you can start to sort of step outside of what a pattern recommends if you know your fibers and how different yarns operate. But that's another good reason to do the swatch. So let's go back to the gauge here. The gauge on this particular ball of yarn says 10 by 10 centimeters. So that means that, or, or and over here it says four by four inches. So it gives it to you in metric centimeters or imperial inches. It recommends an eight millimeter hook. That is the recommended hook to get this gauge, not the recommended hook for the yarn. So a lot of people confuse that thinking, oh, I have to use a size eight hook with this yarn. No, you don't. You could use a size two hook if you were that nimble. <laughs> But in order to get the specific gauge that people who have tested this yarn have come up with, they recommend using an eight millimeter hook. It also gives you the US sizing down here, which is an L or 11. 
and they recommend using single crochet. So eight single crochet, that's the number of stitches, by nine R or nine rows. So we're gonna work nine rows, eight single crochets wide. So eight single crochet by nine row should get us a 10 by 10 centimeter or a four by four inch swatch using an eight millimeter hook. So we're gonna test that right now. I'm gonna pull out the inside of this ball of yarn if I can find it. See if we get a little bit of yarn party here. There we go. So I'm gonna get all my stuff out of the way so I can clear myself a work spot. Hope everybody's got a nice cup of tea or a coffee or everyone's doing great. Nice cool bevy revy, bevy ridge. We have 257 people watching. Well, welcome everybody. I'm just gonna have a sip of water here. Okay, so because this needs to be eight centimeters long, or I should say eight single crochet stitches long, that means we need a foundation row of nine chains because it's always assumed that if you're using single crochet, you use a single turning chain. So one turning chain at the end. So for eight single crochets in a row, we're going to chain nine to start. So there's my nine chains. Let's count them up, make sure one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine chains, you skip that first chain, single crochet into the next chain and single crochet into each chain across. That will give me eight single crochet in row one. And I don't recommend immediately measuring at the end of row one, because if you're anything like me, your first row might be a little tight, maybe it'll be a little loose, but it isn't necessarily a good uh, example of what your tension is going to be, which is why they typically say, you know, they give you like nine rows, 10 rows, maybe even 20 rows, because they need you to kind of even out your tension. So it's another good reason to work that sampler or that swatch is not just to check your gauge, it's also to even, even out or ease out your tension. So, you know, if you're a bit cold, you might be a bit tight, you got to loosen up. If you're whew, hot or something, maybe you're a bit loose, maybe you need to like get comfortable with that hook and that yarn and then maybe you'll tighten up a little bit chain one turn at the end of every row single crochet in each stitch so always skip the turning chain i'm going to single crochet in each stitch all the way back i'll still have eight stitches and i'm going to just whip up nine rows of this and that last stitch is sometimes pulled down the edge so i'm just going to make sure the end of row two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight stitches. It's row two, chain one turn. Skip the turning chain, single crochet in every stitch. And once I get to the end of row three, if I take a look at my little swatch and I feel like it looks fairly even, like the edges look pretty, pretty straight. They don't have to be, you know, computer perfect because we're not computers. <laughs> but if it looks relatively straight, like what I mean by that is that I don't, I'm not fanning out or pinching in that means that my tension's pretty even that looks pretty even to me maybe i'll get one more row in here before i measure the width because i'm always curious to know pretty quickly if my width is on i find when you work on a project that starts with a foundation chain base the width is the trickiest part because if you have to you can work more or fewer rows in the actual pattern itself to get the length but getting that width, you want to get that right, right from the beginning. Um, so this is pretty even looking. So I'm one, two, three, four rows in. I have five more rows to go, but I'm going to check my width right away. I am exactly four inches across or 10 centimeters. So that means that if I'm confident about my gauge, that tells me that at least my width is absolutely bang on with the gauge. Um, suggested on the label. So my width is already accurate, but I want to make sure that my height of stitches or the length of my little swatch is also the same. So I'm going to continue to do that entire swatch. And in most cases, especially if you're a beginner, but especially if you're making an item of clothing, make the entire swatch uh, recommended in the gauge section of your crochet or knitting pattern. I have done it in the past where I was just so eager to jump into a project that I skipped the gauge altogether, worked, made the entire project, didn't really know 
what I was supposed to be looking for. And instead of making a baby jacket, I wound up making a jacket that would fit a three-year-old. Um, <laughs> which technically is okay. I mean, children continue to grow. They don't usually shrink. Um, but it was a bit of a bummer that, you know, the person I was making it for couldn't use it right away. But that's because I didn't take the time to test my gauge. If you get to the end of your swatch and you find that you are smaller than the recommended gauge. So let's say here I am using an eight millimeter hook and I'm doing the required number of stitches and the required number of rows. And I'm looking for a piece that's four inches by four inches or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Let's say it was three and a half inches by three and a half inches or, you know, eight centimeters by eight centimeters. That means that my tension is tight. So my gauge is smaller than it's supposed to be. That means my tension is tight. So I have a couple of options. One, I can, the most easiest thing to do is to grab a bigger hook. Obviously, I need to upsize my hook in order to upsize my stitches or loosen my gauge, loosen my tension. And then I make the whole swatch all over again with a larger hook and the same yarn, and I measure. And typically, the bigger hook takes care of a gauge inaccuracy on that level. So if you're like inside of a half an inch or a couple centimeters, then that typically takes care of it for you. If you do the required number of stitches and the required number of rows with the hook and yarn and you're too big, so your swatch comes out larger in this case than 10 by 10 centimeters or four by four inches, then you might want to try a smaller hook because you have looser tension. So grab a smaller hook and I always just do it in sets of like, I'll go up a full hook size. So if I am using a five and a half millimeter hook to get the gauge and I'm too small, then I will go up to a six and a half hook and try again. Because I find sometimes that if I'm really off a half a hook size is just too little. Same thing if I'm too big and I wanna come down. So I usually move up and down by a full hook size. So where am I at with this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have done the required number of rows. I have done the required number of stitches. That looks that looks like a perfect little square. And it's so cute, I might actually keep it. <laughs> I don't know what for, but... So I know I'm 10 centimeters. I'm actually just a smidgen over, maybe 10 and a half centimeters, but a half a centimeter is not worth worrying about. And I'm about four inches, just a smidgen over four inches. So that's perfect, in my opinion. And measure from the bottom to the top. I am just under four inches, which means I might be exactly 10. I'm, I'm pretty much exactly 10 centimeters. So my gauge is exact to the gauge um, that they say you should get using an eight millimeter hook, eight single crochet by nine rows. So if I do their little gauge pattern with an eight millimeter hook, I'm exactly bang on to what they say I should come out at. Now, why is this here? This is not here for a specific pattern, unless there's say a pattern for this underneath the, um, like if there if that gauge is the one used in this pattern, let's say the pattern is on the label, then they'll say that, you know, they'll tell you that you use this gauge if there's a separate gauge, it'll be included in the pattern. But mostly what this is important for, because not every label has a, 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 an actual pattern on it, the gauge recommended on a ball of yarn gives you an idea of where you could or how you could use the yarn. So if you're designing something, and for example, I love this square, and I have a whole bunch of these balls of yarn, and I do the square, and I go, well, this is a perfect little four inch square. Gee whiz, if I made a whole pile of these, I know that this square, nine, nine rows by eight single crochet stitches, um, every time I do one of these, I'll have a perfect four inch square. So if I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna design an entire blanket that's little four inch squares. Alternatively, I can quickly do some math and say, oh, but if I double it, so if I have um, not, not eight, but 16 stitches across and not nine, but 18 rows, then I should double that effectively and have a perfect eight inch square or a 20 centimeter square. So once you test your gauge, you can do some math and extrapolate. I know that I can, if I, I don't have to make an actual 
16 single crochet by 18 row sampler to know that I'll probably get exactly an eight inch square with those measurements. So that's the whole point of having this. Here, work this tiny little sampler, measure your measurements against what's recommended or what we came out with, and then you can start doing math on your own to figure out how big this will work out for you. So if I'm making a project like an amigurumi and I know that so many stitches are gonna be, like for every, every eight single crochets, I'm gonna have about four inches of length. That's important for me to know because if I'm just doing little bits of math, like, oh, I'm working on this little amigurumi or I'm making this, this granny square. If I know that I'm any more over eight centimeters, I'll be over or eight single crochet, I'll be over the four inch mark. But if I'm under eight single crochet, I'll be under the four inch or the four inch mark. So this is why gauges are helpful. They give you an idea to do your own designing, uh, to tell you how you might use this particular yarn in another project. If you're working on a project for size with size four weight yarn, um, and you want to, to sub in something really large, it's gonna change the pattern for you. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's something like a scarf or something that's not super uh, size heavy, you'll know that if you want to make that same scarf pattern, let's say it's a it's a single crochet scarf in stripes, very, very simple. And the original pattern was all in size four medium weight yarn. Well, you know, in the size four medium weight yarn category, it's probably about half the size of this yarn thickness, but you might want to work the same gauge. So eight single crochets by nine rows with a five and a half millimeter hook, let's say, and see how much smaller it is. And if it looks like it's roughly half the size of this one and the original pattern that uses a size four medium weight yarn and a five and a half millimeter hook tells you that to get eight inches, you need to chain 31 and single crochet in every single stitch, blah, 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 blah. So you're working a 30 chain or a 30 single crochet row to get eight inches, you'll know that because if you want to use this yarn in this hook, that this is exactly double that. So instead of 30 single crochet across with a size four, you may only need 15 single crochet across with this size six bulky and this particular hook. So once you start designing or getting more confident and subbing in yarns um, in lieu of the ones that you've got, that's how you use the gauge that you see on a yarn label. Let's change pace a little bit. I'm going to just take this and put it aside. I'm going to have a little sip of water. Okay, now we're going to start doing a little more serious stuff. I am working on a pattern. It's a pattern that I built. Um, it's actually a, a baby blanket, or if I shouldn't say baby blanket, it's a baby sweater pattern that I designed, oh golly, back in 2014. And I've made it a few times. I've made it with different yarns and different hooks for different occasions. And I've been trying to refine it every, every so often when I make it, I make my notes, because I want to make it into a kind of a simpler pattern that a lot of people can use. Um, to make not just one baby size, but make a few different baby sizes. So part of that for me is working out the gauge. Now I've got my measuring tape, I have my marker and a piece of paper, and I've got my three favorite hooks that I like to use with a size four medium weight yarn. So I'm going to use, this is the yarn that I'd like to make the actual baby cardigan out of. And I'm going to go for doesn't really matter, but I'm going to use the pattern stitch. So the pattern that I designed this little baby jumper in is uh, alternating rows of single crochet and half double crochet. I love to pair up those two stitches a lot because a single crochet is a dense stick a stitch and a half double crochet is also a dense stitch, but it's just a little bit taller. And in this way, you can get length a little bit faster in a particular pattern without sacrificing denseness of stitchery. And in baby clothing, I don't like to make things too lacy because you don't really want their little fingers getting caught in it. So especially for baby sweaters, I like to stick to denser stitches. So single crochets and half double crochets are some of my favorite. 
I'm going to start with my favorite hook size, which is a five and a half millimeter. It's also known as an I or a nine. This is a size for medium weight yarn. It's acrylic. Um, if I pull on it, there's a little bit of stretch. If I squeeze it, I can feel the denseness of the yarn. So I know it's not uh, fluffy. It's not going to sort of compress to nothing. So I already in my mind have a good idea that maybe 10, centimeter, 10 stitches by 10 or 11 rows will be maybe 10 centimeters by about 10 centimeters, but we're gonna find out. So in order to get 10 single crochet across, I need to chain 11. So there's my 11 chains. Always skip the first chain from the hook. That's your turning chain, especially when you're using single crochet. And I'm gonna single crochet in every single stitch or chain, I should say, all the way back to the beginning. That will give me 10 single crochet. And like I said before, I'm gonna resist the urge to measure the width of my sampler at the end of row one, because row one isn't a good uh, indicator necessarily of your tension. So there's row one, it should be 10, 10 stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Chain one turn, always skip the turning chain. I'm going to single crochet in every stitch all the way back and I'm going to do about four rows before I measure my width because I figure at about the four row mark um, my tension should be locked in for this little sampler. I realize I'm doing an awful lot of chatting here, everybody, but I uh, was hoping that once this live stream has become a video, it's a helpful and useful reference tool for you all. And I didn't want um, you to feel like you were going to have to fast forward through a lot. So we're going to get all the, the the useful information up front done and talked about, and then I'll uh, I'll chill out a little bit more and we'll maybe just uh, chit chat a bit. I think this is my third row. I've got one more to go and then I'm going to test my width. We've probably been going about 20 minutes, I would say. So <laughs> thank you everyone for popping by today. If you're just joining us, we're talking about gauge. And this live stream will be a useful video once it has finished, whenever that is. I figured I would just work on my gauge swatches right till the end. Okay, so before I go any further, two things. One, I've done four rows of single crochet and I'm gonna test my hypothesis. So I'm already at just under three and a half inches. So that is already smaller than I anticipated. I'm about eight and a half centimeters across. So in order to get four inches, I'm going to need more foundation chains in my swatch. Um, so I started with 10. I'm going to go up to 15. I was kind of, my instinct was to do that. I think 15 should be enough. And then I'm going to work this swatch in the actual pattern stitch. Um, and that would be a row of single crochet, a row of half double crochet, a row of single crochet, a row of half double crochet, etc. Okay, so in order to get 15 stitches across, I'm starting with 16 chains. I'm still going to skip the first chain from the hook, single crochet in the next chain and every chain across. I'll have 15 single crochets now. I think that'll probably land me closer to my four inch or 10 centimeter wide goal. And this way, I'll know, it's nice to measure things in, in sort of 10 centimeters and four inches. I find those are two very useful measurements when you're working on projects. And if I'm close to, or pretty much bang on my uh, attempt, then I'll know that every 15 stitches or so will equal 10 centimeters or four inches of fabric. So that's what I'm going for here. So there's my first 15 stitches and send it single crochet. I'm gonna chain one turn, and now I'm switching to half double crochet. So every even row will be half double crochet. 
for my little pattern swatch. Quite often, if you're working on a pattern and you see the gauge, the swatch may say, chain 21, work in pattern stitch for 10 rows. When they say pattern stitch, they mean literally the pattern that you're working on. So let's say you're working on a pair um, or even a blanket and it uses the primrose stitch. And the primrose stitch consists of two alternating rows of uh, stitchery. So row one is all, say, the granny shell stitch and row two is all a bunch of picots. That is the pattern stitch, or in that case, the primrose stitch. So if you were told to chain 21 and work in the pattern stitch for 10 rows, you would work the pattern stitch, which is a row of granny shells and then a row of picots and a row of granny shells and a row of picots, et cetera, et cetera. That's the pattern stitch. And that's what they want you to do while you work so many stitches by so many rows. So that was a row of half double crochet, chain one turn. I'm back to single crochet and I should still have 15 stitches in each row. So quick count, make sure I'm still in the right count. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. Yep, I have 15 stitches. Um, you can kind of see that my edges are leaning a little bit. That's very typical. Don't worry about it. When you work back and forth in a pattern stitch that isn't all exactly the same stitch, you might get a little bit of leaning. Um, that always disappears once you add a border to something. So if you see a bit of a lean, don't worry about it. Um, it's only concernable if you see this happening, like a narrowing in your edges, or this happening, a widening in your edges. If you see a little bit of a lean, but it's basically the exact same thing one way or the other, that's not a big deal. So that's row three. I'm going to chain one turn. I'm back to half double crochet for row four. If your edges aren't straight, so I always like to put it down. If your edges aren't straight, um, like I said, if they're leaning one way or the other, it's not a big deal. But if they're tightening or they're loosening, there's two things to check. One, it could be your tension. That's fine. You know, sometimes we start out tight and loosen up. Sometimes we start out loose and tighten up. That's very normal. So don't sweat it too much. But the other thing to check is your stitch count. If your stitch count isn't exactly what it's supposed to be, so you're losing stitches or maybe you're gaining stitches, that is the quickest way to throw your edges out of alignment. So if, for example, in my stitch uh, swatch here, I should have 15 stitches every single row. So far I do, and that tells me that my stitch count is not the problem if my row edges are widening or tightening. If they are widening or tightening and my stitch count is correct, then I know it's my tension. And that's the easiest thing to figure out if your edges aren't sort of doing exactly what you want them to. That's row four. I've now done four rows in my little sampler. So I'm going to take a moment to measure. I'm at four and a half inches now. So now I've blown past my, my attempt. 10, 10, 11, 11 and a half centimeters. So this is what I would do. Take my paper and my note, and I will say this. Uh, single crochet, half double crochet pattern. So that's the little pattern stitch I'm working on. So that's the stitch I know. I tried a sampler at 10 single crochet, and I got, uh, what did I say? Just three and a half or three inches. This is why you always make your notes as you go. Um, I was shy. Uh, I think I said it was about three and a half or three inches, three and a half. Chat help me out here. Um, I think I said it was about eight centimeters. And then I did 15 single crochet. 
and it worked out to four and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeters. So somewhere in the middle, probably around the 12 stitch mark, I should get to my target of four inches. So this is why people often skip the gauge. It's long and boring, but it's so important because look, I, with all of my experience, assumed that if I jumped from 10 to 15, I'd probably close in that gap, but I blew past it. So now I'm going to try the whole thing at 12. Oh, and here's another thing I should probably do. Right now I'm using the 5.5 millimeter hook and size for acrylic. Couple notes, these are just notes to me, but it's very important that I say all that because then I'm gonna try the exact same thing with two other hooks. And I wanna see just how much my, my exact same swatch measurements size up or down. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna start again with the same hook, the same yarn, but I'm gonna do 12 stitches across now, which means I need a foundation chain of 13 and a sip of water. Glad everybody could make it today. It's kind of a nice day to sit and play with yarn. All right, 13 chains. Skip the first chain, single crochet into the next chain, single crochet all the way across. I should have 12 single crochet stitches at the end of row one. I will resist the urge to measure my width at the end of row one. And I instead will do four pattern, four pattern stitch rows repeated at least before I give the width measurement a try. All right, so should be 12, three, six, nine, 12, yep. Chain one turn. I'm gonna jump right into the stitch pattern, which is half double crochets on the even row. So chain one turn, always skip the turning chain, half double crochet in every stitch all the way across. Double check, three, six, nine, 12. That's nine half double crochet. I should say 12 half double crochet across, chain one turn, back to single crochet and skip the turning chain. Like I said, I'm gonna get four rows into the sampler before I measure my width. And then I will continue with the sampler to see how many rows of the pattern repeat I have to do before I get to my target, which is 10 centimeters or four inches. So that was row three, chain one turn, skip the turning chain, half double crochet in every stitch across. Okay, three, six, nine, twelve. I have twelve stitches across, so I haven't lost any. I haven't added any. One, two, three. I am four rows in. I now feel confident that I can measure my width. My sides are not going out or going in, so my tension is even. Here I go, hoping for four inches or ten centimeters. Oh, I'm so close. I'm just under the four inch mark. I am almost exactly the ten centimeter mark. So. That tells me that that gauge is close enough. If you are off by a percentage, like a sixteenth of an inch or a couple of millimeters, that's fine. That's a that's a negligible amount. So that tells me that. Back to my notes. Twelve stitches equals four inches or 
10 centimeters. So ding, ding, ding. This is my, this is my target because I want that measurement. So I know now that 12 stitches with the five and a half millimeter hook and the size four acrylic yarn that I'm using will get me four inches or 10 centimeters in width. Now I've got to test out the row hypothesis to see how many rows in this pattern stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, half double crochet in rows, how many rows I need to do in the pattern repeating stitch before I get to an even square. So what you want is a square. So I will continue this pattern stitch for a little while longer. Single, half, single, half. I'm back to single. This is such a soft, slippery yarn that I'm slipping right out of my own stitches sometimes. So I'm going to do at least 10 rows of this, the pattern repeat before I bother to measure. I'm going to skip my turning chain. Why does that feel funny? Do I actually give myself an extra? No. Chain one turn, skip the turning chain, and half double crochet into the first stitch and each stitch across. Sometimes that first stitch looks funny. This is why it's good to count at the end of every row. All right, so I still have 12 stitches, that's good. Um, I just remembered, um, we were talking about sort of hook sizes and how they differ and how to quickly measure them if you don't have hooks that have measurements on them. If you, uh, if you have a measuring tape, you can measure them yourself across the diameter of the hook, like I said at the beginning. Um, but you also might look for, this is a fun little tool and a useful thing to have uh, in your collection, a hook and needle sizer. Um, these are typically plastic or metal. I have one of each. They're a little almost like um, uh, about a postcard size and they have holes in them and each hole has the measurement underneath it in typically millimeters um, and also the US or the UK sizing depending. I have one that has all of it. The old UK sizing, the metric system, the American sizing um, and you just basically keep dropping your hook and needle or needle through holes until you get one that just fits perfectly and then you know that that's the hook size. So that's called a, a, a needle sizer or a hook sizer and they're usually available where hooks and needles are sold. Um, I've got a couple, I think one's by Red Heart and the other one is an old plastic one. It doesn't have any information on it at all. So I'm not sure actually where it's from, but that is a good thing to have in your collection, especially if you find uh, fiddling with a measuring tape difficult or tricky uh, or if you know you just need glasses <laughs> like I do and reading the millimeters on a measuring tape can be a little a little cumbersome sometimes so that's a handy thing to have especially if you like to collect crochet bits and bobs or crochet tools and of course you can use it for knitting needles too so if you're into both art forms like I am it's a handy thing to have three six nine twelve still at twelve back to half double crochet All right, how many rows am I in? Two, four, six, eight. I'm eight rows in, so I'm gonna do at least two more rows before I stop and check my height. But typically you can tell once you're starting to look like a square. Um, with any luck, this will be a 12 by 12, 12 stitch by 12 row kind of phenomenon. We will see.
Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten rows. A small lean to the side, but I know that it's leaning at the same time. So that's not a width problem or a tension problem or a lack of stitch problem. I've been counting. You still have 12 stitches all the way across and a little lean, not a big deal. Very typical when you're working a repeating pattern uh, that isn't the same stitch every single row. So I know that I'm almost exactly four inches across or 10 centimeters across. So that's my target width. And we want to get the same thing going. So I'm a little shy, nine centimeters and three and a half. And that's 10 rows. So 12 rows might be magical. So I love it when it's 12 stitches by 12 rows or 10 stitches by 10 rows. I love it when it's the exact um, same number across as it is tall, uh, because that tells me that my tension with that particular hook and yarn is like perfect. So let's hope that 12 rows at the pattern stitch at 12 stitches is exactly my target measurement. Okay, there is 12 rows. So I've completed 12 rows of my pattern stitch. There's a little bit of a lean, but I can fix that by hand blocking on the run. So if I flatten that out, give it a little bit of a, a pull and a press, don't be afraid to manhandle your work. It's your work. It's not going to die <laughs> if, you, if you pull it and stretch it a little bit. This is uh, blocking as you go. I like to do that a lot. So I'm pretty much almost perfectly at four inches or 10 centimeters wide. 12 rows is, ooh, I'm just over. What is that, about 10 and a half centimeters or just a little bit of four and a quarter inches. So that's close. I'm going to make my note. 12 rows of pattern stitch, so single crochet, half double crochet equals 4.25 inches or did I say that was in centimeters? Uh, 10 and a half, 10 and a half centimeters. So pretty darn close to my target. Now, it's unlikely that you're going to build something that when scaled up, a difference like this is going to turn into inches over time. You'd have to make a pretty big project. And really large projects have a much sort of looser gauge typically. But if you're working on something like a baby sweater, then the difference of a quarter of an inch between 12 rows or 42 rows is negligible. Also, things like sweaters, you should always err on the side of it being larger. Um, because a larger sweater is more comfortable to wear. And for baby clothing, babies grow. So always worry about it being too small versus too big. Uh, so for this purpose, my size four yarn at a five and a half millimeter hook, 12 stitches gets me four inches, 10 centimeters. 12 rows gets me four and a quarter inches or 10 centimeters, 10 point, 10 and a half centimeters. Make sure I'm accurate here, 10.5 centimeters. And that's pretty much my target for the size I'm going for. I am now going to do this exact same sampler, 12 stitches by 12 rows of the pattern repeat using a hook size that is one full size down. So a four and a half millimeter. And then I'm going to see how it differs in measurement because that will tell me if I need to change the pattern stitch count and row count or not. So if I want a much smaller um, cardigan, I may not actually have to change the stitch count or the row count. I might just have to change the hook size. So that's something else that I like to do if I'm designing something. So my next attempt is a four and a half millimeter hook. 
and the same size for acrylic. I'm using a single crochet, half double crochet pattern stitch. And I'm going to use my 12 by 12. So 12 single crochet, so 12 stitches and 12 rows of the pattern stitch. So here we go. Pull that out. Okay, and a little sip of water. Here we go. Five and a half aside, I'm moving to the four and a half millimeter hook. So I'm a full hook size down now. Let's try the exact same sampler all over again and measure. So 13 chains to begin with. Skip the first chain from the hook, single crochet in every chain all the way back. That'll give me 12 stitches in row one. And once again, a reminder, the reason that we do gauges and we test out swatches and samplers, as you can see from my earlier issues, <laughs> is so that we don't get ourselves a whole ball of yarn and several hours into a project like a sweater. This is especially important if you're making it for someone. Sweaters are such a labor of love and realize that it's too small or realize that it's way too big. It is so much more painful to have to start over again several hours into a project because you didn't do something simple like test your gauge um, than it is to just spend 15 minutes or a half an hour or a lunch hour, whatever you've got time for, just testing the gauge out to make sure that you are in alignment with the pattern requirements. And like we said, if your gauge is too big, go down a hook size, that's the easiest thing to do. If your gauge is too small, go up a hook size. Uh, unless you need to do things like change out your yarn. So if you're using the same yarn that the pattern calls for, you should be okay. I still would recommend testing the gauge. But if you're substituting in a different fiber, uh, a different yarn weight, or even a different brand, because not all yarns in the same category have the same weight or thickness or thinness to them. If you're substituting in a different yarn, it will probably be fine, especially if it's in the same weight category, but it's still really important that you test your gauge. Save yourself the heartache. Oh, wow. And yes, I've switched to a smaller hook. I, I feel myself having to get used to that narrower hook size right off the bat. So another reason to work that gauge is to get your tension woes worked out before you get right into the main pattern. Gigantic welcome to everybody who's just joining us. We are unraveling the mystery of gauges today. Something super helpful for anybody who knits or crochets. It's uh, often a, a real big question mark for newbies. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, I'm 30 plus years into knitting and crochet at this point. And um, I still struggle with gauge and tension. And it just depends on well, a whole lot of factors, but um, I learned my lesson a long time ago. It's very important to do that gauge. Here I am, like I said, 30 years of, of experience. This is literally my favorite weight category, <laughs> size four medium acrylic yarn. And these are my favorite hook sizes. And I was still not accurate in my estimation about how many stitches I would require to get my target. It took me three tries to get it. So if you're new and you're struggling, do not feel bad. Don't give up. Don't feel like, you know, oh, this is not something for me. I'm never going to get it. No, 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 no. You can be 30 years into this and still make errors or miscalculate. 
that is the whole kind of, that's the science behind the art. <laughs> Getting a lot of thank yous and a lot of love. Aw, thank you, everyone. Enjoying the, uh, the chill lesson. Well, that's awesome. However, watching you rip out the yarn was extremely painful. <laughs> like I said, you want it to be your gauge, not the actual sweater. That's that's when you want to throw it out the window. So do the gauge. Try the sampler. Don't don't give yourself the pain and suffering of having to pull out a couple hours worth of work. That is just awful. I used to watch my grandmother, you know, get, get, oh my gosh, like a whole, a whole body into a, into a, a knit sweater, see that she'd knit, her, knit a stitch or something somewhere and just kind of shrug her shoulders and tear the whole thing out. And, <laughs> and I used to think, oh, my biggest concern was, isn't all your yarn going to tangle? Doesn't, didn't drive me crazy, but, but I know some people it makes their, their, their stomach sink. <laughs> I learned from her that that tearing out your work is like ripping off a Band-Aid. It is short-term pain for long-term gain. I noticed uh, earlier that people were kind of chiming in saying that there was uh, getting they were getting a lot of snow in some places. Some people are in the rain. So uh, I just would like to welcome everyone who's hiding from the elements today. Super chat. Super chat. Can you see Liz there? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, I didn't quite catch what it said, though. Can you can you read it? Can you read it out to me? Could the gauge sample? Hold on, I lost it. Here we go. Could the gauge sample also be used to see how the piece would handle the wash? Yes, um, absolutely, Liz. So I mentioned earlier that an, a good reason to keep a swatch or a sampler around. So you see me tearing mine out. A good reason to keep it after you make it is to wash it alongside your uh, finished project. Now beforehand, if you're if you're new to that particular fiber or a particular kind of yarn and you think to yourself, is this gonna, it says on the label, for example here, oh, it says I can wash it in warm water, but can I really? Yes, make yourself a sampler, check your gauge measurements. And then if you intend to use the washing machine, toss it in the washer, toss it in the dryer, you know, use the extreme of all the care and uh, maintenance instructions that the label has and see how it comes out. If it's pilled, you know you don't wanna use the washing machine. If it's shrunk, you know you don't wanna use warm or hot water, you wanna use cold. Um, if it's shrunk after the dryer, you know you don't wanna use any heat in the dryer, you only wanna air dry. Um, so yes, working that gauge or sampler is a great way to test the strength the stretchability, the durability, the pillability of that yarn. It's also good if that all works out perfectly for you to keep it and wash it every single time you wash the sweater or the blanket or whatever the project is. Because if you need to repair something on that finished project down the road, you'll have perfectly aged yarn from your sampler that you can take apart and use to fix a spot and it won't show because it will have weathered at the same time as the rest of the project. So. Uh, great question, and yes, absolutely, gauges have multiple purposes, purposes multiple uses. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm having a sip of water here. I typically hand wash everything. I don't honestly trust a washing machine as good as it is, as whatever the label on the, the, the thing says, I typically hand wash. Now, if I'm giving something away as a gift, let's say a baby blanket, I always give the care and maintenance instructions along with the blanket to the new parents. And I always say, you know, the label says you can machine wash uh, warm um, and you can, you know, tumble dry or air dry or hang to dry. Um, and then I always give my personal recommendations based on my own experience with the yarn. 
Uh, but I try to give, if I'm giving out a blanket or something to someone uh, for their children, I know that it's probably going to get a lot of use and therefore a lot of washing. So I try to pick a product that I know holds up well to that kind of um, that kind of of behavior. Par parent, new parents do not have time to hand wash, lovingly hand wash and hand dry, uh, you know, a crochet gift, no matter how much they love it. They just don't have the time. So, uh, you know, choosing yarn fibers that are machine friendly is always a good way to go. How many rows in am I? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'm going for 12 rows and then I'm going to measure my little sampler using my smaller hook and see how uh, how square it is. I'm looking I'm always looking for a, sort of a perfect square. Um, off the top of my head, if anybody's wondering, great yarn fiber options for gifts, um, unless it's like an adult that you're making a very specific special sweater for, in which case you can go with the more expensive yarns because adults, adults without small children often, not always, but often have more time to sort of lovingly hand wash an article. Uh, but if you know they're not the type, then don't give them something like that's a really high end fiber because they might ruin it and then they'll feel terrible. Um, cotton, acrylic, cotton, acrylic blends, um, some wools, not all wools are scratchy and nasty. Um, wool cotton blends and wool acrylic blends are nice. Um, always do the field test and always double check with the person you're making a gift with if or for if there is any kind of allergy that they are aware of. If you're giving something to a baby, I recommend cotton, um, organic cotton, linen, cotton acrylic, baby acrylic, soft acrylic, um, nothing with super strong dyes in it. And um, if you're going to wash it before you give it as a gift, and I usually recommend that you do wash things like baby cardigans, baby sweaters, because you want to knock out all the dust and the broken um, uh, fiber bits and stuff before the baby gets it, because babies cram everything into their mouth. So I highly recommend washing a gift before you give it as a new baby gift. Um, I recommend not something with a strong dye. Do not wash it in anything with a strong uh, smell. So use a really um, simple, uh, natural uh, detergent. And do not use fabric softener. That stuff is awful. <laughs> it is all chemical. It is all smell. And it's too much on a baby. I know us adults can handle some of the smell, like it gets like our noses aren't as tense sensitive and our skin isn't necessarily as sensitive, but do not use fabric softener for anything for babies. It's just, I do not recommend it, especially not on this stuff because sometimes that fabric softener chemical can even interfere with the fiber of the yarn. So don't recommend it. If you have to soften it, a little bit of hair conditioner is perfectly fine because it's also a conditioning agent, but it isn't super harsh like the chemicals used in laundry detergent. So a little personal recommendation from myself. Um, I have done 12 rows now. It's leaning a little bit, doesn't matter. It's an even lean. So that tells me that I'm not getting too big or getting too small. Leans aren't important because they it all comes out once you've sort of blocked it properly, not a big deal. I'm gonna measure, it looks a little longer than it is wide. So that's good for me to know. It's three and a half inches wide. It is three and almost four inches, but three and three quarter inches tall. So I'm gonna make a note of that. 12 stitches across is, what did I just say? My gosh, I've got no memory today. Three and a half, three and a half inches. And in centimeters, that's nine centimeters. And it's, oh, almost, it's nine and a, nine and a half, I'm gonna say, 9.5 centimeters. 
and almost nine. I'm going to call that nine. Nine centimeters. Um, what did I do? Nine centimeters by nine and a half. Three and a half inches by how many inches tall? What did I say? Three and three quarters? Three and three quarters. 3.75. So three and three quarters. So uh, you know what? I'm going to write that over here. 3.75 inches. Because I can't even read my own notes. Okay, there we go. Nine and a half centimeters or three and three quarter inches. That's the height. So that's the four and a half millimeter hook. Okay. Good to know. It's starting to become more rectangular at this point with this hook size than it is. Uh, so the width has has sort of scaled down neatly, but the height didn't scale along with the width. So I find that interesting. Um, I am now going to go down a half hook size to a four millimeter and try the whole thing again. And this will give me a good cross section of where I get the perfect square. So where I should base the, the, the measurements on this pattern from. So like what the best hook would be, like say this one or this one or this one. Um, so hook and same yarn. This is a size for acrylic. All right, I wanna do 12 stitches and I wanna do 12 rows of the pattern stitch, which is single crochet, half double crochet, and we'll see where that takes us with the four millimeter hook. So if frogging stuff gives you a bit of a, triggers you a bit, then don't watch this. I'm about to pull my sampler out again. <laughs> I kind of like the feeling of, of pulling out stitches like brr, 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 brr. I don't know it feels kind of neat I, I, it's never really bothered me much I'd rather think that I was getting something useful achieved which I am see my notes or that I was getting the exact right gauge um, because I I don't like mistakes especially when I'm making something clothing related a little sip of water Okay, here we go again. I'm switching to my G hook, four millimeter. I'm gonna use the same yarn and the same stats. So 13 chains to begin, and this is a much smaller hook, so I've gotta really concentrate up front as I get used to the smaller hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, there's my 13 chains. Wow, that is so much smaller already. Woohoo! Skip the first chain from the hook, single crochet into the next chain, and in each chain all the way across. That'll give me 12 single crochets. Holy cow, that is so much smaller. Wow, okay, I'm resisting the urge to measure, but my gosh, that feels significantly smaller. <laughs> this is why gauge is so important. A row of half double crochet, and then two more rows of the pattern stitch before I measure my width. I have to get comfortable with that smaller hook. Wow, this is significantly smaller. Holy smokes, I cannot wait to measure this. <laughs> All right, row four. Row four is half double crochet. Let me get this in here and we'll give it a measure. Oh, did I split my yarn? Don't wanna do that. Oh, 
Oh, for anyone who is looking for an escape after today's live stream, and you look out the window and you see that it's snowing or that it's raining or that it's just generally kind of bummy out there, may I highly recommend Pro Walk Tour's channel. He recently uploaded a night walk through the um, Almafi coast in Italy. So he just wanders around this little town in the Amalfi coast at night while everyone's out sort of schmoozing and chatting and having pizza. And, and he, you know, he kind of shows the beach. It is the nicest little escape for about an hour. I highly recommend it if you feel like doing a little virtual traveling. We've mentioned Pro Walk Tours on the channel before because we absolutely love his channel. He does a lot of walks around Italy, some in France and a couple of other places, and they're wonderful. He doesn't talk. If you want to turn on the the, the little sort of uh, closed caption, you can get all these neat historical facts, or you can just sit there and listen to the ambient sounds of him wandering around. It is just so nice. Highly recommend it, especially if you need a little mental change from where you're at. Here is my fourth row. I'm going to measure my width. Whoa. So I've already scaled down to three inches. Eight centimeters, three inches. This is great. So 12 stitches is three inches or what did I say eight centimeters eight centimeters oh this is nice this is nice this is great Ooh, I'm going to show you why it's so good to do three different hooks as soon as I get this little sampler done so chain one turn back to single crochet I'm going to do all 12 rows and I'll measure my height and then we will look at my notes and we will make some scientific deductions from them. Oh, and by the way, if you use a particular yarn a lot, these notes are extremely helpful to you because down the road, if, you, um, if you're going to use a particular yarn over and over again, you can just refer back to your notes. Whoops, I got to switch back to half double crochet. You can refer back to your notes and you'll have a really good idea of where that yarn will take you with this chosen hook and you can i'm not saying to do this immediately but you can get to a point where you can gasp skip the gauge <laughs> so if you use a yarn a lot and you know exactly how it works it works in your hands a certain way with a specific hook and you are so familiar with it then you can start you, you'll know you'll know your own you know, you'll know you'll know your own work. Um, so it's good to keep those notes. I really recommend making notes and keeping them. That's why project journals are so handy. I think I see a. I think I see a. Um, did I did I see a membership milestone, honey? Yes, we have a membership milestone from Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy is very happy. Two months by, went by really quick and has been learning Aww. a lot here. Very, very thankful. Kathy, we're so happy to have you as part of our family. Thank you so much for being here. And that goes for everybody. Thank you all for hanging out with us today. Um, I don't want to be one of those annoying channels that says hit the like button, but I'm going to ask you to hit the like button <laughs> if you're having a good time. Uh, because that does help us out. It's literally tell the trains that little that little computer algorithm that uh, people who like crochet might also enjoy this live stream. Two, four, six, eight. I'm eight rows in. I have four more rows to go. Um, I really enjoy these live um, long form formats because when we're when we're doing something like talking about gauge, for example, I really feel it's important and helpful to watch someone go through the process in real time this is this is i did so much of this when i was learning and i had to do it all on my own because i learned how to do all this before the internet i taught myself how to crochet from an old book and no one else around me at the time really crocheted or could help me out so i had to do it all based on you know what i understood from the book what i knew something should probably look like and I learned everything the hard way. I learned about gauges and samplers the hard way. No one told me that I should really do them or why. Um, I figured it all out the hard way. And um, 
you know, if I feel like looking back, it would have been really helpful to see somebody doing something in real time and to explain to me why they were doing it. I was one of those kids that was constantly asking why, 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 why? Um, so that's why I feel like these kinds of, of live events are hopefully helpful to people who have similar issues. I know if you if you kind of crochet or knit long enough, you'll run into some kind of gauge question. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. Okay, I think I'm at 12 rows. Let's find out. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve. Leaning a little bit. That's perfectly fine. It's not too wide. It's not too, it's not, I should say it's not getting wide. It's not getting narrow. So I'll just give it a little bit of a block here just to sort of even it out a little bit. This is much more tall than it is wide. So 12 stitches at 12 rows. It was eight centimeters or three, just a little over three inches. So three and a quarter. No, not quite three and a quarter. I'm going to say that's three inches. But how tall is it? It is three and a half inches or nine centimeters. Three and a half inches or nine centimeters. That is interesting. Three and a half inches versus nine centimeters. Okay. What has making the same sampler with three different hook, hooks but the same yarn told us? Let's find out. Keep my little sampler here. So before I dive into this, another sip of water. Okay. We're going to look over the notes. I started this sampler with a five and a half millimeter hook and I've been using the same yarn throughout. So size four, medium weight, acrylic. I used a five and a half millimeter or an I or nine, then a four and a half millimeter or a size seven, and then a four millimeter, also known as a G or a six. So those are my three hooks, big, medium, small, or big, small, or smallest. And it's the same yarn throughout. I also did the same number of stitches and the same number of rows throughout. So each sampler was 12 stitches across by 12 rows. I was using a particular pattern stitch because I'm making samplers for a very specific pattern. That pattern is single row, single crochet row, half double crochet row and alternating. So every other row is half double crochet and the rows in between are single crochet. So that's the pattern stitch I'm using as opposed to it all being single crochet or all being half double crochet. And it's very important that I work that gauge in that specific pattern stitch because it's not all the same size stitches. So that's important. So what did this teach me? It taught me that with the largest hook I used, 12 stitches across is four inches or 10 centimeters. If I went down a half or a full hook size, I should say, a full hook size to four and a half millimeter, but the same yarn size, the same number of stitches across is three and a half inches or nine centimeters. So a full inch, I should say a half an inch smaller than a full hook size larger. So that's interesting to me. So five and a half millimeter, four inches across, a four and a half millimeter, so a full hook size down, three and a half inches across. Um, so that's a half inch smaller. But then when I went down a half a hook size to four millimeter, same yarn, 12 stitches across is three inches across. So again, a half an inch smaller. So I think to me, that's interesting that a full hook size made the difference of a half an inch in width and then a half a hook size more made a half an inch difference in width. Why is that? It's not necessarily the hooks, but it's because we're keeping the yarn the same. So a size four medium acrylic has to go somewhere when you crochet it into a stitch. You can get smaller stitches and less spaces in your in your project, but you're going to hit a point like the terminal velocity. You're going to hit a point where that yarn can't be compressed any smaller. 
and it's going to vary from one yarn to the next. So because of this, this, um, this is a, a Lion brand pound of love to be specific. This is a beautiful size four weight yarn. I love it. And it com it's not going to compress much smaller than what I can get out of a four millimeter hook. So even though the difference between the five and a half hook and the four and a half millimeter hook is a half an inch. The difference between the four and a half millimeter and the four millimeter is also a half an inch in terms of width because the stitches, the yarn can only go so far. So I can only compress it so much. I think it's hit max width compression at the four millimeter level. So I wouldn't want to use a hook size that was any smaller than that. It wouldn't make much of a difference. So there you go. Let's look at height. The height with a five and a half millimeter hook at 12 rows of the repeating pattern stitch. So it's not all the same size stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, half double crochet. I come out to 4.25 inches or 10 and a half centimeters. So almost a perfect square using the 12 stitch by 12 row scenario. That's with the five and a half millimeter. I go down a full hook size to four and a half millimeter, same yarn, and the height goes down to 3.75 inches or a half an inch or nine and a half centimeters or a full centimeter. So I've gone down a half an inch in height between a full hook size difference. If I jump down a half a hook size, which is a four millimeter, the same number of rows brings me down to three and a half inches or nine centimeters. So I've gone down a quarter of an inch in height or a half a centimeter. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the hook makes more difference in stitch height than it does in stitch width or yarn compression. So I have I have less room for width compression in my stitches, the smaller my hook gets, than I have in height room. So I can keep building up. The yarn is kind of like it's it's still making nice tall stitches, but my height isn't compressing as quickly as my width, the smaller I get. And ultimately, I'm trying to get a perfect square. So 12 stitches by 12 rows in that particular pattern stitch with the five and a half millimeter hook is as close to a perfect square as I'm going to get. So that is the recommended hook size for the pattern that I'm working on. But I do know that if I downsize my hook a full hook size, my width will compress nicely, my height not as quickly, but it will still it'll still get smaller, but not by much. And if I go down another half size hook, which is about the limit to the hook size I want to use with this particular yarn, it'll compress my width by another <clears throat> half an inch, but my height by only a quarter of an inch. So if I want to change the width on something, like for a baby sweater, maybe I want the chest to be a bit smaller, but I don't really want to sacrifice the height or the length of the sweater, then this is an okay um, decision if, I'm, if I just want to make the sweater a little bit smaller or snugger because the baby's new, let's say. Uh, babies' chest sizes change quicker than their length so the chest, the chest width is more important a concern than the length of a sweater. Because if you're putting a little sweater on a baby over a onesie or something, it doesn't matter if it's short or long. Um, but it does matter about the chest circumference. You don't want to put a compression sweater on a baby. Um, so it's always better to have a slightly larger chest circumference in your sweater than, the, than maybe is called for in the sweater. So if the pattern stitch and the whole thing works out to be a little bit bigger if you're making baby sweaters, don't worry. It's always better to err on the side of bigger than it is to have it end up smaller uh, because babies don't always, babies will always grow, but brand new babies aren't all the same size. And I've seen some pretty big bra ba brand new babies <laughs> that are like wearing three month old clothing. <laughs> so it's always good to err on the size of larger for a sweater, no matter who it's for. Okay, I'm gonna have a little sip of water here and now we're gonna talk about some questions. So if anybody has questions about gauges, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, I'll explain it. Okay, so Mr. and Stitches is going to type in a prompt. We're going to try out the new question and answer feature in the live chat. Um, so he's going to create a prompt 
it will prompt you to ask if you have any specific questions about gauge or about working up a sampler or any sort of problems you've experienced. You're, he's going to encourage you to create your own questions. So you type a question into the live chat. He will be able to see a list of those questions as they come up and he'll be able to highlight one. And I've got my glasses on now, so I should be able to see the highlighted question when it comes up and I should be able to answer it for you. So it's a brand new feature here in live chat. We're gonna give it a go and, um, and see what happens. Okay. Just sipping my water. Oh, this is very interesting. I'm going to, is it working? Can you get it to? Well, uh, the chat completely disappeared on me. Oh, it looks like it, it may have frozen. Can you see it? It looks glitched. Um, I'm not seeing any motion in the chat. Well, let's see if, okay, no, that's just the question area. Okay, so the live chat is still going. Okay. And the question area is completely different. So okay. We're going to have to see how people, um, how they're able to use it. It's at the top. So you have to click on it at the top. We're testing out a new feature. Yeah, don't mind us, everybody. We are testing out. Hmm. I might not be able to see it, actually, because I'm not at the control center and you are. You know what, everybody? Excuse me one moment. I'm going to fill up my glass of water and take an opportunity to go visit Mr. Insitches in the well and see what he's doing with the chat center. I'll be right back. Oh, no, it's working. Is it? It's working. Okay, so, yeah, come over here. So, I can't see that it's okay. So, here is the live chat. Okay. So, this is the regular live chat. Mm -hmm. And now, if you go to the questions area, this is everyone that has engaged in the question okay. area. So, here are some of the questions. So, you're just going to highlight one and yeah. you're going to read it out to me because I can't see it. Okay. And then I'll just answer okay. it. So, I'm going to highlight one. Sure. Well, I'll just work through them. Yeah, okay, you can so do this, that. This one's from Katie. But you want to click on it because it highlights it so everybody can see it. So you click on the little buttons. Don't mind us, everybody. <laughs> click on the three buttons. Oh. I'm back. I had to get myself a glass of water. Select questions. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So there, there it goes. It just popped up at the top. Okay. I cannot see it. I don't think um, it might, unless there's a bit of a delay. There might be a bit of a delay. Um, I can't Bear see it. While, while we, uh, yeah, it's all right. Just read it out okay. to me. It's showing up at the top now. Okay, I understand how this works. Okay. Um, so the question is, can you take it apart if you don't like it? So who asked it? Katie. Katie. Okay. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Can you take it apart if you don't like it? Yes, absolutely. If you make a gauge and it's not correct, um, if you don't like the pattern, let's say you're sampling a pattern, um, rip it out. Use that yarn for something else. If you do like it um, and you have no immediate plans for your little sampler, fasten off, weave in the tail, and keep it. Um, like I said, you can use it to wash it every time you wash the other project. So you always have some weathered yarn to fix the other project with, should you need it. Otherwise, um, if you make a lot of samples that are all roughly the same size, even if they're not, you can just put them all into a little sampler bin and use them for any number of things. It's almost like a make-ahead stash, but it's like a private make-ahead stash. It's stuff you've made that you might need for something else. You can use it as a little part of a bigger project, like stitch a bunch of them together to make like a little lap can um, or whatever. You never know what a particular shape of fabric might be useful for. So if you really like your little sampler and you don't want to take it apart, don't keep it. You never know what you might need it for. Okay, so now uh, selecting the next question mm -hmm. from Heather. Heather asks, how would you measure a chevron swatch? Ah, good question, Heather. How would you measure a chevron swatch? So depending on the pattern, so if you're following a very specific pattern and they give you a gauge and they don't specify um sort of like where to measure it by 
you've got, I'm going to actually draw a little picture. Chevrons, for anybody who doesn't know, looks like this. So all of your peaks line up. Um, the, these peaks should all be in alignment and your valleys all line up. So you're always, the, the, the height is always going to be the same, whether it's here to here or here to here or here to here or here to here. So you can always measure it between the, the points, right? Because that should always be the same. And the width will always be side to side. So that's where you would measure it from. Um, whether it's here to here or here to here, it will be the same width no matter where you are along the blanket, but then your width will be from edge to edge. Uh, next question from Dara. Dara asks, how do you test patterns in the round? Ooh, how do you test patterns in the round? Good question, Dara. Um, same thing. So if you're doing a big project, let's say it's a let's say it's a sweater that's worked in the round, you still want to test your gauge, and your gauge may still be a square like this. That doesn't matter. What you're looking for is how many stitches by how many rows your measurements work out to. So even if you blow this up to something that's worked in the round, if you flattened it, you would still be able to pinpoint, say, 12 stitches by 12 rows. And this should be the same size of the of, as the pattern that you're using, even if you flatten it. So it doesn't matter if the project's worked in the round, if it's work, if it's a small thing worked in the round or a big thing. A gauge is specifically designed to test your stitch and row size. And that will be the same whether you're working flat back and forth, in the round, upside down, <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, so your gauge will typically always be a back and forth little thing, um, unless it's something crazy specific, but it doesn't matter the, the scale or the, the size or how the project is worked. Because typically, if you're working in the round, your stitches will still be the same size, your rows will still be the same size, whether you work that pattern in the round or work it back and forth. So your gauge will probably still be a back and forth thing, not something you have to worry about. Um, this is from Kathy. Kathy asks, could you please indicate if you aren't able to match both row and stitch mm -hmm. according to... Okay, come back here. Oh, I, I know what she's asking. Which of the two is most and was this Kathy? Kathy? Okay, Kathy, great question. If your width is right against the gauge, but your height is wrong, or vice versa, your height is right and your width is wrong, what do you worry about? Great question. First, ask yourself, how off is it? Are you off by a half a centimeter, a quarter of an inch? Because if one of those measurements is off by a half centimeter or a quarter of an inch, doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Because typically scaled up, you'd have to work a really big project scaled up over multiple inches before that was going to become something that you worried about. Also, with a lot of things like a sweater, if your height is, is bigger than it should be based on the gauge, um, most sweaters are worked like the rows equal your height and your stitches equals the width. A lot of projects are like that. Um, you can always work fewer rows than required or more rows than required in things like, like the body of a sweater. Um, so you can always kind of manipulate it that way if you don't want to fight with hook sizes. Typically, if we nail something like the width in a sweater, it's more width that you need to worry about than height. Because like I said, you can add a row, you can take a row out, doesn't matter. Um, plus, we're not all the same shape. So if you're making a sweater for a size small, but you're short in body, then you might want to make it fewer rows anyway, so that it fits you a bit better around the waist or vice versa. If you've got a long back, but you're like, you know, an incy bincy kind of person, you might want to add more rows just so you get a nice longer row like back to it. So width in that case is more important than height. You want to make sure your, your width gauge is, is accurate because adding width is often more difficult to something like a sweater. Um, in things like motifs or granny squares, because they're typically worked in the square, you're not going to wind up with too many, you know, rectangle versus square issues like you do if you work back and forth. And if you're working back and forth to make a scarf or a blanket or something like that, being off a half an inch or a full inch at the end doesn't matter. Again, you can add another row, you can add a border. So of the two measurements, I'd say that the width is the most important one but 
either or, if you're only off by a half centimeter or a quarter of an inch, it's really not that much to worry about because you can also block up or down your finished project by about that much. Um, Kim asks, hold on, let me put it up. Okay, Kim asks, do you recommend pinning a label to the swatch of the yarn brand, for example, size, etc., uh, maybe with the date that you made it for future reference? So Kim wants to know, do I recommend pinning a label to the yarn? Yeah, a label like with the name, the color, the yarn, the hook size, maybe. Um, if I'm pinning, so it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm giving away a gift, then I will pin care instructions to it. If I'm making notes for myself for a future project, I will maybe keep the yarn label and my notes in a project well, journal. What she means is like, would you pin it to the swatch? Would you pin that information? To oh, the yeah, yeah. So like my notes here, would I pin it to the swatch? In this case, I would keep my notes in a project journal. So I would keep my notes in the project journal alongside the swatch or at least a piece of the yarn, maybe the yarn label. Um, I would definitely make notes about the yarn, the, the manufacturer, the name of the yarn, probably even the color, to be perfectly honest, because I notice I've said this before, but it's because it drives me crazy. I keep kind of harping on it. Red Heart Super Saver yarns are almost identical right across the board. Except for spring green, it is this scrawny, skinny little little yarn. It's so much like skinnier, thinner than the other yarns in the same category. It kind of drives me a bit bonkers. Um, so yeah, I would even indicate the color just so I knew that you know that might be an indicating factor down the road. Should I make the same thing again with the same yarn but in a different color? Um, so. If it's important enough to work a gauge, I recommend keeping a project journal. And that can be as simple as like a, um, a scrapbook where you slip the pattern in, you slip in a little gauge, maybe the one of the labels from the balls of yarn you're using and your notes. And it can all just sit loosey goosey in one of those, those um, scrapbook plastic folders. Doesn't have to be super cute and arranged unless you've got the time, maybe be your hands are hurting and you really want to be creative but you can't crochet take the time to take your project journal off the shelf and like do a little scrapbooking make it pretty make everything sort of easy to read and flip through and it's a little lighter on your hands but still technically in the crochet realm and it's still being creative <laughs> hunter asks is gauge important for amigurumi hunter asks is gauge important for amigurumi good question it depends on the amigurumi so if you are intending to make something super super small and the project calls for like a crochet thread and a specific hook and you want it to be that tiny then yes um gauge is moderately important if you're using the same hook and the same crochet thread you're going to get something pretty small um but more often than not in crocheting something like amigurumi or stuffed toy you want your stitches and your fabric to be whole free you don't want spaces that your stuffing can leak through so it's probably more important that your stitching is nice and tight and your fabric is is doesn't have a lot of spaces in between stitches than the actual size um it does matter if you are intentionally taking a an amigurumi pattern that's say made using a size four weight yarn that winds up being let's say it's fist sized and you really want to size it up um i always say if you want to size up something like an amigurumi because amigurumi and stuffed toys have very specific stitch counts and they were made originally with a very specific scale gauge in mind the easiest thing to do is to just use a bigger hook and a super super bulky weight yarn like a burnout blanket yarn and size up that way don't change the pattern but continue to make sure that your stitches are tight so that you don't have spaces in between because you don't want to see the stuffing and you don't want the stuffing to leak through so that's probably the most important thing less so gauge making amigurumi. Um, Rosie asked about gauge. Uh, how, would, how would you measure a corner to corner blanket, gauge for a blanket? Rosie asked, how would you do gauge for a corner to corner blanket? Excellent question. Um, in this case, you wanna pay attention to those little blocks. So let's say you're three rows in to a corner to corner. I will draw a little picture. Corner to corners are built like this, and they basically look like that while you're working on them. So there's a block, there's a couple blocks, there's a couple more blocks, etc. right? 
So if you, this is your height, this is your width, you're probably working it like this, bop, 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 bop. but when you want to stop and measure it, you turn it so that you are looking at it at a right angle, you measure your height, you measure your width. If the pattern specifically says work so many rows by so many stitches, it'll probably mean so many blocks by so many blocks. So four blocks high, four blocks wide, that's how a corner to corner works. You always, as you're continually increasing and getting bigger on both sides, these two sides grow at the same rate when you're increasing. So your width should be exactly the same as your height. So in a case like a corner to corner project, um, you know, this should be this, if this is eight inches, this should be eight inches. Um, so you would measure the height and the width at the right angle. Um, Great question. Regina wants to know how long have you been crocheting? Regina wants to know how long I've been crocheting. I've been crocheting um, officially since I was 14. So I learned in it when I was 11. I've had a hook since I was five. I have pretended to, to crochet for a long time when I was a little kid. I would, you know, wrap yarn around the hook. Uh, but I didn't get serious about it until I was 14, 15, when I started actually sewing my own clothing. I got absolutely, utterly, and completely obsessed with making clothes of all kind from all different methods. And inside that same year, I... I knit like crazy. I taught myself to crochet. I taught myself to tat. I taught myself cross stitching, uh, regular embroidery, cruel stitch. If 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 it was an existing needle art, I I gulped it up that year. And I've been trying to dedicate equal amounts of time to all of those things over the last thirty years. But crochet won. So <laughs> I've technically been crocheting since I was I was fourteen. That's officially when I learned. So I got my book and I figured it out. Um, Catherine asks, what do you do with all your samples? If um, I make it for a project like um, my baby sweater, like I'm working on right now, I don't keep it. I just make it, test it, test out my hooks, take my measurements, make my notes, rip it out. And I either, if I haven't messed up this yarn, so if this yarn looks pilled or discolored or a bit gnarly, then um, I won't use that yarn in the overall blanket. But if it still looks fine, like, you know, you can, some yarn is pretty forgiving. You can work something, rip it out, and it'll still look fine. I'll just tear the whole thing out and start the full-on project with that yarn. Um, unless I've fiddled with it too much, and then I'll just either keep the sampler, or I will put it, if I don't want to keep the sampler, I'll unravel it, and I'll put all of that unraveled yarn that I don't feel is good enough to use in the, uh, the new project into my sample jar. I'll pick that up. I've got this lovely, great, big, huge, clunky glass jar that I stuff full of yarn. This is stuffing for my Amigurumi projects. Oh, let me see here. We've got a lot of good questions. Um, this is from Mickey. How do you find gauge when there are two hooks? Um, and, and also a kind of um, matching uh, from Lydia. Do you find that gauge also is affected by the brand of hook? Okay. So in other words, same hook size, but it's a different brand. So Mickey and who? Lydia. Mick, Mickey and Lydia are both asking roughly the same kind of question. Or, yeah. So like, what do you do about different hooks? That's a really good question. So is gauge does gauge become affected by different hooks in the same size range? And I'm going to say, yes, it does. Um, for example, this is a Clover Amour hook. It's ergonomic, and I have a knife grip. This is very comfortable for me to use. This is why you see me using it all the time. So when I work up a sampler using this hook, I know it's going to work out to, <laughs> now I know, four, four inches by 4.25 inches if I work this sampler with this hook. If I switch to a 5.5 millimeter hook, so technically the same hook size, but it's not ergonomic. It's just a regular old plain aluminum hook without a fancy grip. My tension may change. So if I'm intentionally changing hooks, then I had better work that gauge with the new hook just to make sure that my tension hasn't changed because um, I have rheumatoid arthritis and it sometimes very heavily affects my ability to grip the hook. And the grip on my hook will affect the tension that I create. 
And if I, for whatever reason, can't use my hook or I'm, I'm using a hook that is really, really big and not ergonomic, I don't necessarily know how my tension is going to work out. Different manufacturers may make hooks that are the same size, but they may vary a little bit. So, for example, you'll find hooks that are a G6, but are not four millimeters, they're 4.25 millimeters. And usually a quarter <laughs> of a centimeter doesn't make that much of a difference, but it might if it's an ergonomic hook versus a non-ergonomic hook. If it's a grip for a pencil grip, if it's a grip for a knife grip, these things all matter um, because we're all very unique. And so that's why you'll find that you just tend to gravitate to a particular hook. You just like it. You find it comfortable. You know, you can work with it longer before you start feeling tightness or tension or something. So, yes, the manufacturer's uh, hook does matter. We're all different. We all have a different grip. We all have a different grip strength. Um, we can all crochet at different speeds and for different lengths of time. And we will all find different hooks at varying degrees of comfort, which will affect your tension. So, yes, a sampler may not turn out exactly the same way if you use two hooks that are the same size, but that are structured differently or are built by different manufacturers. Great question. Uh, last one we'll do. Okay. This is from Robin. Robin asks, would a bigger hook make a more open pattern? Yes, Robin, great question. Would a bigger hook make a more open work pattern? Absolutely, and if you wanna see that in play, we have a hot chocolate scarf. It's a, um, a wraparound infinity scarf tutorial that's only single crochet, and it uses a size four medium weight yarn, but we're using a super big hook, like an eight millimeter. I can't remember exactly the same hook size. I think it was an eight millimeter. So instead of using, say, a five and a half millimeter with that size four medium weight yarn and doing a single crochet stitch, we're using a much bigger hook with that middle weight yarn doing the single crochet stitch. And it transforms that single crochet stitch from being a very boring, nice, dense filler stitch into a light, loose, lacy looking, easy to wrap around your neck stitch. And it's one of the easiest patterns I've ever turned into a, a, an infinity scarf. You just work around and around and around and around and you're using that big hook and it's creating a nice, loose, almost lacy looking stitch but it's still the single crochet. Um, so yes, a bigger hook with a thinner weight yarn will create something much bigger and lacy. And a smaller hook with a larger thickness yarn, like we detailed here, will create a much denser fabric, possibly even one that wants to ripple on you. So another reason to work a gauge, if I haven't convinced you already, is to play with your hook sizes and your yarn sizes, because we're all built differently. And you might find that you get a kind of fabric density or a kind of loose laciness combining a particular hook, particular hook size and a particular yarn weight that you love. And you know what? What better way to experiment with it than making something super useful like a scarf? You can always use another scarf. Somebody can always use a scarf. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, we'll link it down below once this is a finished video. It's the hot chocolate infinity scarf. It's just a single crochet stitch. And I think we used a, I can't remember if we used a Karen cake or a Burnett pop for that. I think it might've been a Burnett pop, which is a size four medium weight yarn and a really big hook. And it's, it's just such a soft, loosey goosey kind of scarf. It's one of my favorites. Um, there was a question from Tracy, but it's not in the questions area, um, just let everyone know that as the questions go up, I, I can't access older ones. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's only so many questions. Like the in the Q and A, if you enter a question, it'll get led, it'll load onto the list. But after a while, the top ones, the oldest ones, the first ones get kind of shoved off the top of the list and we can't see it anymore. Yeah. This is a new feature, guys. We're experimenting with it and we're gonna give our feedback to YouTube. So um, this is all kind of fun. Yeah, I had a question, but Tracy had a question about width. If she wants to put it in the normal chat, we'll try and answer it. Sure. Um, other than that, that I think we got most of them that I could tell. Um, 
Great. I'll wait a few minutes for that. And otherwise, I guess we'll wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll if Tracy, if you want to put your, your question in again or put it in the wherever you want to type it in, we'll, we'll see if we can see it and uh, we'll answer that. Um, other than that, <laughs> before we see Tracy's question, I just want to take a second to thank you all for spending some time with us. I hope today's chat was helpful. Um, I We do get asked a lot of questions about gauge and working a sampler, um, questions about how to read it, how to understand, you know, what this silly thing means on a label, um, the confusion around, you know, people thinking, oh, that's the hook size I have to use uh, with this yarn. And sometimes, you know, we'll do a tutorial using a size four medium weight yarn, and we want you to use a four millimeter hook, a G6, because we're making an amigurumi. We want dense stitch work. And someone will inevitably comment and go, well, I have a four weight yarn here, but the label says to use a five and a half millimeter hook. No, that is just the hook recommended for the gauge. If you want to try the gauge, if you intend to replace your pattern yarn with this new yarn, or if you're designing yourself, that's why that's there. So I hope, <laughs> I hope we helped clear up some of the mystery around gauge. Mr. and Stitches, have you seen Tracy's no, question? Uh, oh dear. Okay. Did anybody happen to see what Tracy asked? Was it a good question? I don't know. I didn't see it. I, I, don't, I don't think it came through. Oh, the, uh... it didn't work out. Okay. Well, we did mention sort of a question about width earlier. And just to yeah, reiterate, maybe talk about width a little. yeah, just to reiterate, if um, you're worried about which is more important, like if your width is accurate, but your length is off or your length is accurate versus but your width is off, I would recommend that width is probably more important than height because you cannot go back and change the number of stitches across <laughs> but you can always change the number of rows in something like a blanket or a scarf or a sweater you can always remove a few rows from like just the the, the, the general repeating system like the middle part of a scarf or a sweater while you're building length you can remove a few rows if you're swatch tells you that your height is taller than necessary and you can add some rows if your swatch tells you that your height is smaller than necessary so width is the more important um, measurement to pay attention to but if you're only off by like a half centimeter or a quarter of an inch it's not worrisome at all i i hope that helps answer that question if not tracy and you're still around just mention it in the comment section down below and, and i will get to it later very good. Everyone, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, we will see you Friday here on the channel. Um, if you've got additional questions about gauge or making samples, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section down below. I do read all of the comments. I try to get to all of them if there are a, a question that I feel wasn't answered maybe in the live stream or the tutorial. And of course, if you guys know the answer and you're perusing the comments later, please feel free to chime in. Um, if you've got something helpful to say, I love to see that conversation down below. It's fantastic. So take care, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Friday. Thanks for hanging out and um, all the best. We will see you soon. Oh, Tracy. Showed. Oh, Tracy, she's here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's Tracy's question. Okay. I'm doing a pattern that's a gauge, the gauge is 15 stitches in width and 4 inches, and I got 12 stitches. Is it going to be bigger or smaller? So if you hit the 4 inch mark already at 12 stitches as opposed to 15, then your tension is larger. So that means that your pattern, if you continue to follow the pattern, so for 15, for 15 stitches, you're looking for four inches, but you've got the four inches at 12, then if you do 15 inches, technically it will be wider than, than um, 15 stitches, you'll be wider than four inches. So the width of your project, if you continue to use the hook and yarn you're using right now, will end up wider than you want it. So if your width is wider, then try either a smaller hook size, go down a full hook size, or try a thinner yarn, yarn that will com has more compression, compressibility uh, move or more room for compression. Um, that is an excellent question. Yeah. So if you're if you've already hit the four inch mark <laughs> at 12 stitches and not 15, you're going to end up with a wider piece than necessarily you want. Unless it doesn't matter. Like if we're talking blankets, then a little wider is always OK. If we're talking baby sweaters or adult sweaters, a little more width is okay. Um, but that's 
that's a difference of three stitches. So out of curiosity, I would work that sampler a couple times with different hooks and see how close you can get to 15 stitches equaling four inches versus 12 stitches equaling four inches, because that's really, it's three, three stitches is quite a lot if you scale that up. So if three stitches is the difference between hitting, like, if three stitches is the difference between hitting that mark and already hitting that mark, so wanting to hit the mark and already hitting the mark, that sounds to me like you might almost, that three, three stitches might almost be a full inch. And if you scale that up, that's quite a lot. So um, try it with a smaller hook and see how it works out. That's a really good question. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for chiming in there, Tracy. I'm glad we were able to get to you. We'll see you Friday. And um, oh, gosh, I'm seeing the sunset. It's lovely. I Spring's here, fall's here for everybody in the, the, uh, the Southern Hemisphere. So it's just a beautiful change of season all around. I hope it's good to all of us. And I hope the weather is perfect for the rest of the week for everybody. Take care. We'll see you soon. And thanks for hanging out. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.